So, we to start. Um, good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Mariana Shkuko. I'm, I'm a leading expert of High School of Economics, Greater School of Urbanism. And today, I'm glad to welcome you to the fourth session, to the fourth event of our summer online lecture series, Housing in Question. And today, our guest is Dr. Martin Or. Oh, Resnicek, sorry, um, the Vice Dean for Geographical Faculty at Charles University in Prague, um, Czech Republic, and also the head of the research laboratory called Urban and Regional Laboratory. Yeah, and today uh, we will speak about the um, problems of contemporary governance within housing and states. Uh, in Prague, with special attention to the role of public and private institution. And without any further ado, I'm turning the floor over to uh, Dr. Resnicek. And uh, as usually, um, unfortunately, we cannot see you or hear you, and we cannot just organize that particular connection. So please give your reactions, comments, questions in the chat section below. Um, that you can you, that you can see on the right side of, of the screen, and also yeah, so <laughs> the, there is this flame button that you can also um, put on to uh, inspire the lecture and to like share your attitudes towards the lecture. So yes, please, Martin, go go on by. <laughs> Yeah, we still cannot hear you. Could you please turn on the sound? Yeah, just put the pointer on the... Yeah. So it seems like it works now. Is it okay now? Yes, yes. That's cool. Okay, so uh, no technical problems. What uh, was what, <laughs> what I... Uh, was afraid. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, say thank you for all the organizers that uh, you were able to prepare uh, the session uh, and thank also all the participants. And today I would like to speak about, uh, about housing estates with specific attention to uh, Prague housing estates, or generally maybe housing estates after transformation or tra after transition. And uh, I would like to start uh, shortly maybe with the structure of uh, today's presentation and maybe some main objective of, uh, of my study. Uh, what I should stress at first, uh, the presentation is based not only on my research, but uh, on the research which uh, was done uh, in my laboratory, Arvent and Regional Laboratory, and especially this paper uh, was um, prepared together with Zuzana, uh, Zuzana Kopecka. Uh, so this is the first information. Then, uh, I'd like to present uh, several uh, different parts of, of uh, presentation. Uh, the first one is uh, focused on new functional differentiation of housing estates in Prague and uh, also consequences of private activities, privatization and commercialization uh, dealing with uh, case study of the largest Czech housing estate, uh, Yizhny Miesto. Then, uh, as a counterbalance of this commercial, commercial power and, and commercial uh, development, uh, I want to discuss with you the role of uh, public sphere, public policies, and especially uh, master planning uh, on the level of the city uh, of Prague, but uh, also at the level of uh, the individual uh, city district of Prague 11, which is uh, southern town housing estates. And the third uh, point uh, is something like uh, synthetic outcome of these two 
uh, counterbalanced processes, commercialization and public uh, policies. And these results can be presented as, as uh, changes in social economic status of housing estates. And as I said, uh, I'd like to, uh, to use case study approach and uh, something like a symbol of socialism uh, or socialist housing in Czechia uh, is definitely using Mesto, which uh, then will illustrate uh, the impact of state municipal policies and commercialization uh, on the local on the local level i have prepared two slides uh, with maybe the general context of of my research and and as i said uh, i work together with my close colleagues uh, within the laboratory and the name of laboratory is urban and regional laboratory which is part of the department of social geography so we are geographers and regional development uh, so we are something in between uh, of urbanist architects on one side and maybe sociologists demographers on the on the on the second side on the other side and the main research topics which uh, we uh, together with my younger colleagues um, investigate are uh, stated here first development of settlement system and processes of urbanization and suburbanization which is my core topic then on the level of individual uh, neighborhood within the city social spatial differentiation and we use also so-called new social spatial differentiation which is new after uh, Velvet Revolution after democratization you know, in my country. And uh, maybe something like microgeography. So not the settlement system as a whole, but uh, a social spatial differentiation between neighborhoods, city parts, and, and parts of the city. Uh, specific attention of my colleagues are on this um, unemployment, criminality, social deprivation, and segregation topics. Uh, which is also core, one of the core topics of my group. And then mobility in general, not only migration, uh, but also commuting and we use uh, together uh, in cooperation, for example, with, uh, with Estonians, uh, I saw, uh, I saw Kadikam, uh, so uh, mobile phones and, and all these uh, kinds of mobilities within, within the city. Uh, then our newest project is uh, focus on historical aspects of urbanization and suburbanization and of course uh, we had two projects specifically on housing estates and this is uh, why I want to say something also about this topic. More information uh, is available on our website so this is possible to, to, to see it there and uh, one more slide for introductory uh, part uh, is on with the names of the project, contemporary project or project under realization today, these years. Uh, some of them are of poor research, some of them are more applied. Uh, so, for example, real population of Prague and Central Bohemia region uh, together with demographers and, and based on population prognosis. Then uh, together with the uh, Institute of uh, Sociology on residential segregation, uh, we have also a new project uh, of uh, Czech Science Foundation of, uh, for Geography with Disability. And uh, my colleague Petra Špačková is the head of a new project uh, on history and, and future of housing estate, which we participate together again with Institute of uh, Sociology. And the last one is a project on, on suburbanization, and mainly on social environment. So generally, if I can sum, sum it up somehow, uh, so we deal, we deal more or less with people uh, within the city. And so, so people and population within the city uh, is the core issue uh, of our uh, investigation. Uh, one more slide before I start. I will start with uh, housing estates topic. Uh, is uh, something like synthesis of our theoretical methodological approach, and uh, partially uh, 
uh, we uh, use theory of Anthony Giddens on structuration and partly we develop own theory uh, or concept of social environment and this picture uh, can summarize somehow what is in core in the core of our investigation so if you compare two parts of uh, let's say living environment within the city so only part is physical environment what is visible what what is uh, uh, more or less uh, the core uh, core uh, for uh, urbanists and architects on the other hand we want to investigate and we try to investigate social structures of residents and users but also so-called social climate uh, these two parts are quite uh, invisible, but we are able to describe it using, for example, data uh, describing demographic, economic, social and ethnic composition. But we want to add the second very important part of the social environment, which is social climate. So, for example, social cohesion, time, space, behavior, safety, criminality, mobility, uh, rhythms within the city. This is what at least we want to, uh, to investigate, not only these structures, but also these, let's say, uh, abilities, mobilities and, and behavior. And one more thing uh, what I want to stress in this first uh, only slide on theory uh, is uh, that we believe that urbanization processes uh, urbanization, suburbanization, gentrification, commercialization, etc. Uh, that these processes can create tensions or create something new. And especially these tensions are very important uh, issues for investigation. For example, tensions between uh, newly uh, uh, incoming people uh, and living environment. Uh, so these tensions is something what uh, what is the core of of our uh, of our uh, research. Well, then I would like to, to skip to the core of today's presentation, which is housing estates, and I'd like to start with uh, quite an old uh, remembering of a meeting in Prague when uh, uh, Western scholars from Britain, from Netherlands, also from other, from Scandinavia, they, they came to Prague and, and we discuss especially risks, a risk of, of uh, uh, neoliberality, a risk of privatization, new uh, processes of segregation, commercialization and, and ghettoization, and especially on the outskirts of our cities. And together, uh, we were afraid all afternoon with, 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 with our colleagues and they, uh, they want to discuss these risks or these uh, maybe negative consequences, especially of privatization uh, of uh, housing estate. And they perceive uh, our housing estates like social housing. And uh, from this time, uh, uh, there were a lot of investigation, a lot of research articles uh, presented not only in Czech Republic, but uh, through the world post-socialist Europe. And <clears throat> we recognized that uh, some of the uh, concept and theoretical issues uh, were of very limited relevance and that Western theoretical concept uh maybe they, they they work quite nicely for the inner city like for gentrified localities and and for uh let's say inner city and 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 uh, the core of our cities but they have limited relevance especially for outer parts of our cities of our post-socialist cities and uh, together with for example slavka Ferenčová and other people we uh, wrote several articles in spe special issue of European geography and economics in 2016. So, uh, and that there were two issues in my articles. The first uh, was on the suburbanization that the suburbs and, and settlement system around post-socialist cities are very differently developed than, than for example, 
uh, carpet development around uh, LA or in Western Europe. And the same uh, situation uh, was described also in housing estates, for example, together with uh, German colleagues, Estonian colleagues, uh, but also other, uh, other uh, colleagues from Eastern Europe. Uh, we put together uh, a book on housing estates in, in Europe, and it is quite clear that the <clears throat> situation in our countries uh, were very different. And these differences, uh, we can state, for example, size of housing estates. So very big housing estates in, in Czech Republic, Russia, but also in, in Hungary and Poland are not comparable with, uh, with smaller uh, in Western Europe. The same is true for allocation of apartments. Um, we, were, uh, we had a waiting list, uh, we had very specific state housing policy in Czech Republic, for example, comprehensive housing construction program. Uh, and all these consequences uh, led to very, very different uh, social economic structure, the situation in housing stock, uh, situation in privatization, and especially mixed uh, population within our housing estates. And it is very, very important to, to say that not all uh, Western theoretical concepts are uh, suitable or efficient for uh, investigation of our uh, post-socialist cities. Um, to skip uh, our attention to, uh, to Prague and maybe to something like general context on housing estates in Prague, uh, we can say that uh, in 1993, uh, so-called comprehensive housing construction program of socialist, uh, socialist country was terminated and by this year, the proportion of population living in housing estates in the capital city of Prague has stabilized at uh, 42% of the total uh, population, and the same is true for, for the proportion of housing stock. So, this is very, very important. This is the most important part of uh, housing stock in, in Prague, and we have something like three generation of housing estates and uh, they are quite stable after privatization. They are stable not only in case of uh, the physical uh, condition, but they are very stable in case of demographic and, and social, social structure. So we can compare, uh, we can compare the whole residential area uh, in Prague and we can use this um, the limitation of uh, uh, different residential areas in, in, in the city of Prague. And you can recognize, of course, historical part, then uh, something like inner city with tenement houses, which is also very, very important. This is one third of, uh, of Prague population and housing stock. Then interwar period uh, villas uh, with some 50 units in, in Prague. And then you can see that more than half a million of people live or live uh, during the last population census 2011 uh, in housing estates. Some of them are from, made from brick, some of them are, are preferred panel houses and more than 109, sorry, 150 uh, units uh, is possible to, to delimit it in, in Prague. So very, very important uh, part of housing stock. If we compare uh, some other Czech cities, of course, we have, uh, for example, Havirov and, and other industrial cities with, with more than 70, 80 percent of housing stock in panel housing estates. But uh, Prague is something like 40, 42 uh, percent of, uh, of people. Uh, this map uh, made by my colleague uh, Jiří Nemeškal and also part of uh, our article uh, make it more clear and uh, you can compare the spatial patterns of housing estates uh, within the capital city of, of Prague and you can compare that 
uh, around the inner city there, there were located smaller housing estates with, with uh, more uh, connectivity with more connection to to uh, transportation and, and technical infrastructure and then uh, especially during the 70s and 80s uh, we call uh, the complexes of new housing estates as towns so for example we have uh, on the northern part, northern town, then we have southwest town, and we have also uh, the case study for, for today, uh, southern, southern town, which, and all these uh, housing estates were quite uh, autonomous units using especially metro, uh, metro infrastructure and uh, uh, transportation uh, by 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 metro to the city center makes uh, from uh, these autonomous housing estates quite uh, popular places to to live. But uh, there were quite monofunctional uh, areas, uh, residential areas with no uh, many services, with uh, not many uh, jobs and, 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 and working places. So this is spatial patterns and uh, uh, there is something like development using, uh, using data from population censuses from 1970s till 20, uh, 2011 and you can, you can see that uh, during the 1970 uh, share of housing estates share on, on apartments or share on total population was something like 16%, which was quite a few uh, during the uh, 70s. But uh, from the 1990s till, till now, uh, the proportion of housing stock and also population living in housing estates is very stable. It's around this uh, 40% and it means more than half a million of, of people. Uh, for this initial <clears throat> comparison. And we can go through uh, the last 30 years of uh, post-socialist development. So we can use uh, three different slides for different decennia. Uh, first, uh, immediately after the Velvet Revolution, uh, especially the concentration of public administration was very important. So today in Prague, 57 city parts, independent, relatively independent city parts with own mayor, uh, with own budget, but uh, also with own housing policy. So for example, the case of privatization, case of privatization of apartments was uh, in hands of these 57 individual city parts. So nothing like general housing policy of the state or uh, even the city. And each city parts can uh, solve, pro for example, the problem of privatization very differently. So if, for example, Prague, Zepi, uh, they, they had uh, left-wing uh, government and they didn't want to privatize, uh, housing stocks, so it was possible. On the other hand, there were other, let's say, 20 uh, city parts which privatized uh, almost everything in, from housing stock. Uh, another topic uh, for 90s was humanization, uh, renaming of, of old uh, communist <laughs> names of streets, but also metro station, uh, from, for example, Leninova to Davidska, uh, yeah, and from, I don't know, but also from, uh, from Moskevska to Smichovské nádraží. Uh, so uh, everything, uh, every old street and squares were well, renamed for, for new names. And, and then uh, some initial investments also to infrastructure of housing estates, some initial state programs like panel and green savings. Uh, their underrealization. Uh, in case of uh, social environment, uh, initial selective outmigration of especially richer people uh, from housing estates, but there were also barriers uh, to a large mobility 
uh, for example, it was not possible to uh, to buy if you were a foreigner to, to buy a flat in housing estates. And of course, uh, slow aging and, and slowly also uh, lowering of purchase power was uh, or well the, the main issues for 90s. Uh, during the first decennia of uh, 21st century, uh, physical regeneration of public space was, was an issue. And again, after the privatization, uh, stabilization of household and the lowest migration to around within the city was typical for, for housing estates. Uh, what was visible uh, was transformation of institution, not only new uh, new uh, public administration, new police offices, uh, schools and other uh, public institutions, but also transformation uh, of, for example, kindergartens to other people's homes. Uh, sometimes even local heating stations were transformed to uh, something different, some of them to pubs. Uh, but we have many new facilities uh, in our housing estates. For example, new churches uh, in Prague, maybe five, six new churches located in housing estates. Uh, at the edges of, uh, of housing estates, sport halls, new cycling paths, uh, for example, hall for curling, uh, swimming pool, etc., etc. It is very visible, especially around uh, around elementary schools, renovation and reconstruction of of uh, sport and leisure leisure uh, time facilities. In case of uh, in case of social uh, environment, again, what we together with uh, my colleagues from from western universities at the beginning of 21st century were afraid if you remember the segregation this neoliberal approach and and uh, uh, many problems in in case of social degradation so still uh, at the beginning of 21st century very low indices of segregation when we compare it uh, with other uh, cities in, in Central and Eastern Europe, but also with Western Europe. So very, very low segregation. So no segregation, uh, no segregation uh, localities uh, are we able to, to, uh, to search uh, in Prague uh, housing estates. The situation is very different in other cities within the Czech Republic, especially in northern Bohemia, northern Moravia, where exactly uh, housing estates are segregated. But the situation in, in Prague is very, very different. And this is partly due to privatization and partly due to prices uh, and, and rents uh, in Prague, which is very, very expensive. Uh, what else? Uh, new project of housing construction. Here and there, some infills of new smaller project uh, within built-up area within existing infrastructure uh, was very popular uh, for investors to uh, to create new smaller projects uh, within uh, housing estates. And continuing uh, privatization of the municipal housing stock. Uh, And the last uh, slide on this development, uh, the, the last decennia, so after 2010, uh, this is what we together with, uh, with my colleagues called post-transformation period. And uh, we will discuss why it is post-transformation next, during the next slide. Uh, but what is what's typical, what is typical just now for, for um, housing estates and what is also the core of my presentation then, uh, new project of housing construction, larger project around and also inside housing estate, not only in uh Mesto or Southern Town housing estate, but it is typical for all housing estates in, in, in Prague. Then, for all Prague neighborhoods, it's very visible, and this is not comparable to other uh, cities in post-socialist Europe. And this is something special, something uh, what is 
only, I think, uh, visible in Prague, it's growing ethnic heterogenization. And this ethnic heterogenization is not only from, let's say, Eastern Europe, from post-Soviet uh, post uh, space, but uh, from Vietnam, from China, from other, uh, other Asian countries. But on the other hand, this heterogenization in Prague is also from the Western part of, of uh, Europe and, and from the United States and from um, other uh, developed countries. So today, um, I think more than 20% of uh, Prague population uh, is created by foreigners. And the situation is again uh, visible uh, in housing estates, not in such a huge percentage like in the inner city or in uh, historical center, but a uh, very specific population of foreigners are located now uh, in specific housing estates. So this is something what, what must be stressed here, this growing ethnic uh, heterogenization uh, of the social environment in Prague. Not only residential projects uh, are located uh, in housing estates, but also commercial and uh, new concentration of jobs, but also services. We spoke about sport and leisure time facilities for entertainment, but also offices. Uh, this is what, what was surprising for, for, for us. And this is something new, and I, I would like to develop uh, this topic more thoroughly during my presentation. So this commercial, not commercial housing, uh, but commercial development, uh, I, I mean jobs, services, entertainment, offices, and other functions, which were not present uh, during socialism within the housing estate, housing estate, physical and functional environment. And as a consequence, and for geographer, uh, this is very, very important. As a consequence, housing estates started to be regional centers of commuting uh, to work and other services. So formerly only residential areas, only dormitories with monofunctional uh, use, now it's changing very much. And housing estates are, at least some of them, are not only centers for Prague citizens, but they are centers of commuting for the whole central Bohemia region. And uh, we, will, we will discuss a uh, very specific project which attract this commuting to, to housing estates in case of uh, Southern Town. Uh, what is interesting for uh, Prague citizens uh, and uh, uh, this is new plans for transport infrastructure improvement. Uh, I said that um, housing estates are highly dependent on metro, but uh, now new project of um, tramway lines from the inner city neighborhoods, not only to housing estates, but outside the city. There are several plans how to prolong uh, the tramway lines uh, outside uh, inner city of Prague. And this is also very, very uh, interesting because tramway is something that create, uh, I think, this urban character and it could transform easily uh, housing estates. It's something like be, be more urban than, than, than suburban. Uh, and the last point, last issue is, again, uh, based on uh, social environment, changing social environment, and step-by-step uh, -step growing migration, turnaround, growing uh, this um, mobility, and maybe not only mobility, but, uh, but fluctuation, I would say. So we spoke that we spoke about the stability of housing estates during the 90s, but it changed step by step and not only more uh, different ethnic groups, but um, the connection between new housing construction and new migration turnaround and growing migration turnaround is it's clear. So it was the last last point of this, let's say, historical 
historical uh, background during the last uh, 30 years. And now I'd like to uh, maybe explain a bit uh, the term post-transformational. And uh, together with uh, Lutska Pospichilova, which is my colleague, and, and together we uh, think about uh, the end on transformation period, if, uh, for example, post-socialist, the title post-socialist or, or, or the, the term, or the concept post-socialist is proper for our cities. And I would like to maybe focus on several very important termination or, or finishing of, of uh, the processes which were typical for transformation period. And uh, we can say that Today in Prague, these major transformation processes, including restitution, restitution of uh, housing stock, but also restitution of land, then all three cases of privatization, large privatization of firms and companies, then small privatization of, uh, let's say, shops and, and, and small and, uh, enter enterprises, but also privatization of housing, uh, was done. Then uh, no rent legislation, uh, no rent regulation. Then changes in administrative and legislative uh, processes. Uh, for example, this deconcentration of administrative structure and creation of new uh, city parts, new boroughs, new uh, I would say these local elites, and also new state offices uh, concentrated uh, within this new structure, this new administrative structure. So all these processes were finished. And I think uh, we have now chance not to speak about uh, transformation. Of course, we all the time we can transform it from one state to another. But in case of this huge or, or big uh, societal transformation after the revolution from let's say, totality to democracy from uh, more socialist to, to more capitalist, uh, from more planning to, to, to less planning, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think that this is proper time to at least uh, think about the new term and the transformation, at least uh, in Prague, uh, was, was finished. And we want to show that housing estates in Prague uh, are more and more normal parts, not, tran not under transformation, but they are more and more incorporated into uh, naturally growing city and with quite important, not only physical, but, but also, uh, let's say, social contact and they, they create normal part of uh, today metropolis. So, yes. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce shortly the, the case study. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see uh, the core of housing estates, which was created formerly for 100,000 uh, people. Uh, today, I think something like 80,000 people live in, in housing estates and is depopulating uh, from, from 70s and from 80s, but still uh, this is the main uh, urban unit or this is, this is the largest uh, housing estate in, in Czech, Czech Republic or Czechia today. And uh, the name is Southern Town located, uh, located in uh, southern part of, of the city of Prague, uh, around highway, you can see highway D1 to, uh, to Brno and to, and to Bratislava. And Nizhny Mesto is also one of the symbol of the communist era. For example, an iconic documentary film, uh, panel story depic depicted all the stereotypical stereotypical uh, issues and, and social problems uh, with transportation, with all the noise and uh, other problems or 
uh, of uh, just established uh, housing estates. And Yishtin uh, was the original name of the newly built complex of housing estates and something like counterpart of Northern Town, which was located on the northern part of, of Prague. And now uh, this is quite a nice case study uh, because uh, it is autonomous unit now. This is now self-governed city district and, and the name is not uh, in administrative, it's not Yishtin Miesto Southern Town, but it is Prague 11. Yeah, so this is something like an introduction for, uh, for southern, southern town and we can compare uh, so the position uh, of the housing estate within uh, the environment of Prague and also uh, we can compare uh, Prague uh, in, uh, in the context of the wall check here. And I, I have bought uh, this um, uh, this data uh, from the institute uh, uh, deal with, with uh, secondhand uh, prices of uh, or prices of secondhand apartments. So uh, you can then compare three uh, different columns, uh, which is on the left for the housing estates, Prague 11. Then this is average for Prague itself, and then prices of apartments of four different. Uh, kinds of apartments uh, also in Czechia uh, as a wall. So if you compare uh, the economic position uh, of Prague, uh, so Prague is very, very expensive. So uh, many young families, but also all the families uh, who are searching for, for, for apartment, uh, they cannot afford to, to live in Prague. And Prague is really very, very expensive. So, uh, for example, uh, price of apartment in Czechia is something like 40% of Prague, uh, Prague prices. And, and, and the differences are still growing. Yeah, so Prague is very expensive uh, also in Europe, European context. Uh, if we compare situation in central Bohemia, it reached only 40, 42%. And then if, if you compare the weakest, uh, region in Czech Republic, Ustetsky region, it is only 13% of Prague prices. So Prague is really very, very expensive. And if you compare situation in housing estates, these specific housing estates of, uh, uh, of Yizhny Miesto, uh, this is cheaper variant of housing. So it could serve something uh, for something like, like starting apartments. But even the prices in housing estate Yizhny Miesto, even if it, if it is a cheaper variant of starting housing, this is very, very expensive. Yeah, so uh, this is some, something like economic context uh, and uh, situation on housing stock. The second very important uh, topic uh, is privatization. And as I said, uh, the rules of privatization uh, were set up by state, but it was uh, it was dependent on very local local uh, local policies, and every city parts uh, wanted to uh, privatize in different manners. Uh, today uh, we compare privatization in Prague. So it is very similar like in other post-socialist countries and large part of housing stock there was privatized and uh, estimation in Prague is something like 5% of housing stock which left uh, in, public, in public hands in ownership of uh, Prague itself or individual uh, city districts or municipalities. So only 5% of formerly state-owned or company-owned uh, housing estate, housing stock, uh, left uh, some in, in something like maybe social housing or uh, uh, public, publicly-owned housing. Uh, in, case of, uh, uh, in case of last population census, uh, there were 5.5% of apartments 
uh, in Prague, generally owned by public sector. And it was quite a, a bit more on housing estates, uh, 10 or more than 10 percent left uh, uh, in housing estates uh, in hand of uh, public public uh, owners. Uh, now I'd like to uh, speak about new projects, new processes of uh, commercial development. So uh, private investment, and which is visible in several projects uh, on the picture, and there are different types of new development. Some of them are residential, but also shopping centers and, and retail, uh, office buildings, but also other like sport and, and leisure time facilities. So you can recognize four different colors within the map. And then uh, there are also construction, uh, types of construction, construction projects, uh, the same colors uh, with two uh, different signs. One, uh, approved by municipality, but you can see also these crosses, uh, which were project uh, denied by municipality, not approved. And I will use also the, uh, this map for, for explanation of the role of, uh, of planning or, or public control of this commercial development. Uh, in case of private investment, uh, change a lot uh, relative position of housing estates in functional hierarchy of the city and created uh, two different uh, kinds or two different new features of in organization of also regional settlement system first uh, increased supply of services and their relative high concentration have made uh Nesto commuting center for services, business, entertainment, sport, and other activities. And uh, then also this increase, the second point is that this increase of, and concentration of these services has also brought about relatively high concentration of new jobs. So we can compare the function not only uh, as mm, enriching on and richness of the functional uh, functional use from solely residential uh, neighborhood to more complex uh, with especially new services and but uh, the second very important point <clears throat> and uh, this is case of new commuting that all these new facilities brought about new jobs and that, uh, for example, uh, time space pattern of let's say, this residential dormitory when uh, you wake up in the morning and go to the city center or other parts of the city, it changed a lot. And many people wake up in other parts of the city and they travel to housing estates to Ignesto and to Chernimos, to other parts of the city, and they, they work there. <clears throat> and this is very, very important uh, change of, of regional settlement system, uh, not only within uh, the capital city itself, but in all central Bohemia region. You can see here and there concentration, especially around uh, metro station and but also offices and other shopping malls around Highway D1. Uh, you can see also sport facilities, public services, the swimming stadium, sport grounds, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and all uh, the new sites are depicted uh, in, in the map. So we can go directly to some photos and uh, also to, to, to the largest development. Uh, so the first, uh, first photography and uh, the upper part uh, of, of this slide 
is uh, so-called Westfield Hodov uh, shopping center, formerly Hodov Center, uh, transformed shopping mall from socialist era to uh, one of the largest shopping malls in the world, Czech Republic. And uh, on the left hand side, and, and this is the same uh, picture also uh, at the bottom, uh, is new administrative center, the park. And together, uh, these two uh, new, newly built areas created uh, 18 or more than 18,000 new jobs uh, during the 2010s. And in this very small area, a huge increase of in commuting and huge increase not of services, but, but also jobs. Uh, so if you compare 80s and, and 90s with very significant depopulation, uh, especially during, not, not meaning the, the, the residents, but the population during the typical, typical working day. Uh, so this significant depopulation change uh, quite a lot and uh, out commuting, uh, this daytime out commuting has changed uh, to predominance uh, of daytime or nighttime population with peak hours during the late afternoon. And we can see, we can compare uh, even map uh, from the Institute of Planning and, and, and Development uh, there. And you can compare also the number of visitors uh, in, in these units, not only housing estates, uh, but there is also Chernimos and, and, and Zlichin in other parts of the city. And uh, this is uh, something what, what change this daily rhythm of, of, of housing estates. So again, very nice topic for investigation and, and we produce an article together with Yiri Nemeshkal uh, in Journal of Maps. Um, the same is true for new residential infills and, and you can compare uh, residential infill, some, sometimes it is transformation uh, of a formal kindergarten, sometimes a new adjacent uh, project of uh, new residential areas. Uh, for example, 43% 40, of new housing development was located within housing estate zone uh, in the year 2014. And this research was done by Institute Planning of of, of uh, development. Uh, how these commercial activities are managed uh, on the municipal level, uh, on the municipal level by uh, public authorities. And, and this is very important factor and, and something what uh, we discussed together uh, with colleagues from, from uh, let's say Western Europe uh, that uh, this neoliberal uh, approach and new investments from commercial sphere and this openness to, to investors and developers will create a uh, uh, risky environment within housing estates. But uh, what is surprising that uh, the power and the role of uh, uh, the municipality, the city part, uh, or city borrowed, it's very, very powerful. And this is quite important factor of transformation uh, of housing estates. And uh, new arrangement of public administration after 1990 create uh, from Yizhnyesto uh, self-governed city parts with uh, council, with mayor, but also with, uh, with specific body uh, in um, in spatial development and and the body is department of territorial development which is quite uh, quite powerful and uh, especially the master plan of uh, the city as a whole was widely discussed and commented uh, on the level of city district uh, local development projects are subject of approval and sometimes they are not approved. So this is quite strict and, and very important role, not only of politicians, but also of, of offices of this department of uh, territorial development. Uh, 
what is important that not only offices and not only officers or clerks, but uh, um, participation, maybe not only participation, but also sometimes resistance of the local population and the protest, uh, protest activities were quite successful in case of uh, uh, natural areas around uh, around housing estates, for example, Milichovsky Forest, you know, Rostili Park, and, and many others. And uh, that the public interest and this general Vox Populi uh, create quite effective control uh, on private sector activities. And I would say that not only in Prague 11, but also in other parts of the city, uh, this balance between, um, let's say, participation and commercialization, it's quite, it's quite visible. And I think it functions here, here and there, of course, we have also some problems. But in case of uh, housing estates, Prague, Yuzhny Miesto, it's, uh, uh, I would say, quite, quite balanced, uh, the position of uh, this new commercial development and, and public uh, control. Um, I have some five more slides, so uh, uh, if I can can have some five minutes more, uh, I would like to speak uh, uh, a few sentences about uh, the social spatial structure. Uh, it's quite boring table, but uh, the only uh, function of, of the table which we prepared together with Petra Špačková and, and Lucka Pospišilová for our article in Sociological Review is to compare uh, position of housing estates in the context of the whole city uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, social social structure. So uh, you can compare uh, situation in 2011 and uh, for example, in case of ethnic structure, uh, you can compare the last column with so-called location quotient. And this location quotient compare the percentage on housing estates to percentage of the whole city. So for example, the last number of the table says uh, that non-Czech citizenship uh, in housing estates is 79% uh, uh, of the whole city, so less concentrated uh, foreigners uh, in housing estate. And the same, uh, you can compare uh, the rest of the table and uh, sometimes in case of, for example, uh, cooperatives uh, ownership of, of housing stock this is what, what is typical for housing estates. On the other hand, uh, for example, uh, educational structure and unemployment uh, is uh, better uh, on a housing estate than on average uh, in the city of Prague as a whole. Well, so, uh, and the last uh, slide of of my presentation and then I will use only three uh, slides with summary or conclusion or discussion uh, deals uh, with stability or fluctuation of housing estates and if you compare a housing estates with other residential types areas uh, within the city so we can compare data from migration uh, within the city in migration out migration and then uh, together in migration plus out migration, it means gross migration and also saldo, net migration. So this is the difference between in and out migration. And if you compare situation in housing estate, you can say that this gross migration, this is the total moves across the boundaries of housing estates, it's very, very stable. So no big fluctuation when you compare it with uh, the city center or tenement houses in inner city. So there are much, much higher uh, rates of, uh, of migration. And the same is for net migration. And you can see that almost no movement uh, through the period 2003 to, till 2011. As I said, it changed a bit uh, last several years, but still housing estates are 
uh, areas of residential stability. Well, uh, I'd like to go to summary and, and, and conclusion. And uh, first of all, there are four points of, of summary of my presentation. And uh, I'd like to say that the role of public and private sector in uh, this post-transformational post uh, housing estates, uh, that it's quite balanced. And we can say that also is something like typical example. This is not something uh, uh, extraordinary or exceptional. And uh, we can then uh, maybe, um, we, can, we can then use the case of as a generalization for other parts of housing estates in Prague. Of course, not for all housing estates within the Czech Republic, as I said, the situation in uh, smaller industrial cities in northern Bohemia is very, very different. So this is not generalization for all housing estates in Czech Republic. But we can speak about housing estates in Prague as a whole. And first point, uh, is that uh, the importance of public, sorry, private sector and private investment is very, very, uh, uh, very, very growing and, and gradually increasing. However, it contributes rather to the functional differentiation than uh, that it is not a big risk as we discuss it uh, uh, with our colleagues from, from Western Europe and, and maybe uh, the consequences of this inflow of private investment is more positive than, than negative within housing estates. Uh, maybe uh, this partly due uh, the very powerful role of public sector, which is very significant, and uh, offices and, and general public centrally uh, not given up an active regulation and, and want to balance uh, something like sustainable or, or, or uh, smart development of the territory of housing estates. Uh, maybe the crucial uh, was uh, quite successful decentralization of state administration within the city and that uh, many of housing estates, city parts are self-governed and they are able to solve specific problems on, uh, within specific environment. Uh, overall, uh, very important change in functional differentiation and change from monofunctional residential set settlement to uh, something uh, like center of regional in, in commuting to work and services. And as a last point, uh, these consequences uh, are very important also for social uh, social environment and demographic structure and uh, partly uh, also very new thing which is now under investigation of my team is international migration and consequences of, of international migration. So this is maybe the future uh, issue uh, for our research. Uh, another point of view, which is maybe more uh, interesting for architects or urbanists, uh, are the spatial links. And there are maybe three different forms of uh, new spatial links, not only metro uh, underground station, but uh, this is picture from new master plans uh, with, uh, uh, with new lines uh, of tram, tram uh, connections not only to uh, uh, housing estates, but you can see that uh, even to Pruhonice, uh, which is suburban neighborhood outside administrative boundary of Prague. So this is something like maybe symbol of new uh, development and transformation to to more urban, uh, urban physical uh, physical structure. Uh, increase of migration fluctuation again confirms uh, that this relatively stable environment is becoming territory more involved to migration dynamics of the whole metropolitan area. 
And the last aspect of this mobility is an integration uh, of uh, formerly very, very autonomous or uh, monofunctional town uh, into, the, uh, into the commuting center of various function, job services, entertainment, sport. It's normal that you uh, go to sport, not to the city center and outside the city, but to housing estates. So improvement of this urban infrastructure, uh, maybe also quality of life, they attract all these facilities uh, to, to commute to, uh, to housing estates. Okay, and the last slide uh, is something like general conclusion of uh, my presentation or maybe research of the wall group. And we believe that uh, uh, this living environment uh, of housing estates uh, where many Prague citizens grow up. So, for example, I also grew up uh, and, and lived uh, for, for 30 years on housing estates. And what I remember are uh, these, um, um, these carpet beating uh carpet beating stands as you can see on the on the picture and these were places where girls uh spoke together and and uh <laughs> discuss uh what, whatever they they, they 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 wanted so uh this is something like memories and these local playgrounds but also schools these balconies and 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 lifts etc uh, these are places of memory and, and sentiment. And I think that also this, um, let's say, character of the social environment uh, will create during the next several decades housing estates, something like normal or stable part of urban environment. And that uh, this uh, uh, opinion from, let's say, Glasgow or Amsterdam um, was not 100% true, and I believe that this 40, 42% of Prague uh, living environment will transform not only in Prague but also in other cities in our part of the world into something like normal or I would say ordinary quarter uh, of uh, post transformational cities. Okay, thank you for uh, your attention. Hopefully. Uh, there will be no uh, no problems with technical uh, issues, and I'm prepared uh, for uh, for questions, but maybe also for critical comments from from your side. So I'm open for for, for this. Thank you. So thank you very much, Martin, for the lecture. I see some of the questions um, in the chat section, and one is actually my own one. Uh, I was. Um, I was wanting to ask um, like, a, like a short question about the privatization and like the process of privatization because uh, in Russia sometimes um, there, there is a statement that one of the quest, one of the like disadvantages in managing commu uh, like communal property and um, like the uh, any, ki any kind of like uh, communal spaces in large housing estates is the is something that is called institutional trap. So uh, when uh, in the 90s during privatization periods in Russia, uh, housing estates were privatized, they were privatized flat by flat. So basically each household um, make an independent decision in order to privatize, well, to either privatize or not to, pri not to privatize the, um, the flat, but not uh, like the building, that like the building in its entirety and like the uh, territory that belongs to that building. So uh, speaking about uh, Czechia, uh, what type of privatization were there? Uh, was it like uh, flat by flat or was it prior or, or the association of dwellers and the, um, of the dwellers privatized the entire building uh, as an association, but not as an independent household. Yes. So, if I can, if I can use uh, my uh, my presentation. So there, there were one table uh, with social structures. Sorry, I, I skipped there. This is another one. This one. So this is the ownership structure of of individual 
let's say, buildings in housing estates in, in, pra in the city of Prague. And uh, we have population census 2011. So these are the, the, the last uh, numbers. And you can recognize that uh, there is 10% of municipal or state but what is typical, mm -hmm. this is the private, uh, private uh, properties, but uh, also cooperatives and two different kinds of cooperatives. So former cooperatives of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, when the uh, housing estates were built, so you can create a cooperative and, and, and the transformation of the cooperative then is uh, one possibility. And then uh, there is very specific and, and typical, uh, typical case of ownership. And, and this is uh, the private uh, ownership, but of the owners. So this is something like uh, association of the owners of individual, uh, individual house. Yeah, so what was typical to, was the privatization, not individual flats was also possible but maybe 50 60 percent is privatization of of the house of the one entrance of 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 the block mm -hmm. yeah and they uh they uh put the money together and and create something like association of of dwellers or or owners yeah so they are now owners of individual flats but they behave together and for example, they have uh, something like fund for reconstruction. They are able to apply uh, for state programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is this is the main uh, main portion uh, under the other, uh, I would say, in this table. Yeah. So uh, and but this is the ownership only of the house, not uh, the surrounding. And we have quite a lot of problems with surrounding. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, the land and the, the house is not your property. Uh, sometimes it's transformed and you must buy it, etc., etc. So different, uh, different uh, topic is uh, let's say privatization of houses, and what left outside, let's say not garden, but but the street and other uh, public spaces. Uh, this is in hand of of public administration. Thank you very much. And we have a couple of more questions. Um, a message from Daria Volkova. Uh, thank you very much for your lecture. I have two sets of questions. What was your approach to measure segregation across uh, the time periods? And the other one, have you ever seen the signs of stigmatization of large housing estates in Prague? Are they perceived now as good, good housing for a site in the family, for example? Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for the nice questions. Uh, first, uh, segregation. So uh, we were in group of uh, uh, Simon Marcinczak, uh, and uh, maybe many of you know uh, uh, research or uh, cities after transition platform. And, and then uh, Simon Marcinczak, uh, some 10 years ago, wanted to measure indices of segregation, especially in capital cities through the uh, Europe. And we participated in two uh, edited group, uh, it had edited uh, books, and one was uh, using indices of segregation and indices of dissimilarity. So maybe it's the best place to, to compare uh, this indices uh, in a book edited by Simon Marcinczak and, uh, and, and Kita Maru. Uh, so we use mainly these traditional indices. And, uh, but I must say, uh, if I commented uh, this theoretical and methodological concept that the indices are not very proper and, and my colleagues from the Institute of Sociology, uh, they, they want to, to measure it different way. But generally we measure uh, indices of dissimilarity and and and, uh, and segregation. By the way, the indices are very very small and and uh, decreasing. And in case of stigmatization, uh, of course, uh, uh, again uh, there was a big uh, project uh, on socially excluded uh, socially excluded localities in Czech Republic, and more than 
400 of these localities were uh, described in Czech Republic, many of them in housing estates in, in different parts of, of the Czech Republic. And uh, I think also three of them were uh, described in Prague. So three, uh, three uh, localities of so-called socially excluded uh, people, mainly with Roma people, with concentration of poor unemployed people uh, here and there in, in Prague. But this is quite an exception. And, uh, but as I said, many of them are located in other housing estate uh, through the Czech Republic. So uh, of course, stigmatization is something what, what, what is visible, uh, but uh, I would say on some small scale small scale uh, individual houses or, or not, not neighborhoods, but houses, I would say, in Prague. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, another, uh, some other questions from Maria Melnikova. She also thanks you for the lecture. She's asking, is there uh, the tendency of population aging in large housing estates in Prague? Um, how does it influence somehow a social environment now? or it could influence um, that environment in the next decade. And another question, is, is there the trend that people working in the area in those new commercial projects move to the estates? Okay, I would start with the second one. Uh, we have no such research to, uh, to investigate if, if people who uh, who are working uh, on new, especially new uh, offices and shopping malls if, if they are uh, residents of housing estates. So we have no such uh, such data, uh, but it's very interesting. And of course, uh, uh, it is important in case of commuting and, and plan, planning uh, transportation, etc. But unfortunately, not, nothing in, in this case. Sorry. Uh, uh, the second topic is aging. And uh, maybe some of you know uh, our article in Urban Studies together with um, uh, Jana Temelová and Jakub Novák and, and Petra Špačková and, and we uh, wrote about three, uh, let's say, risk and one of them, uh, and it was, I think, uh, 2011 or 2012, something like that, uh, was aging. Yeah, uh, we wrote not only about Prague uh, housing estate, but we compare uh, three different housing estates, one in northern, uh, northern Bohemia, is very segregated, uh, Hanov housing estate. Then uh, we have another uh, case study in uh, Kladno, uh, which is industrial city next to Prague. And then uh, we did also with Yuzhny uh, Miesto. And we, uh, uh, said that uh, they are very differentiated, this, this problem. Uh, in case of Prague housing estates, something like rejuvenation or, or inflow of new uh, young families as a starting, starting uh, dwellings uh, there or starting housing is, is typical. On the other hand, uh, for example, uh, Kladno uh, was typical with aging and, and uh, decreasing, uh, especially uh, this purchase power and uh, transformation in environment to more, let's say, more um, social care facilities, etc. So, aging is, is something what we uh, uh, what uh, what we point out pointed out as big problem, uh, especially at the end of uh, of transformation period, and uh, I think here and there. Uh, housing estates are the most uh, aging part of our cities. Yeah, so th th this is really something what is dangerous. But on the other hand, not all these uh, all the people are um, um, socially socially excluded or socially uh, socially weak people. Yeah, so the 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 social network is it's quite uh, i would say dense in, in czech republic so no problem to be to be old in the city and that's as promising <laughs> at least yeah well, 
Yeah, thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, two other questions from uh, Levanko and Derishvili. Uh, the first one is for is as follows: Could you please specify what is the main problem during restitution processes if there are still take um, if they still take place? Mm -hmm. And um, another one is that. Are there any uh, Czech versions why most popular nice nine-story buildings used in mass housing in Tbilisi, Georgia, in five variation, built in ninety uh, in seventies, nineties of past cent uh, century in Tbilisi, were called were called Czech projects? Mm -hmm. um, were there any explanation behind that that name? And he also thanks you for a very interesting lecture. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I again will start with, with the second question. So, as I'm not architect, I was in Tbilisi, but uh, I don't know the building. Yeah, so, it's my fault. Uh, and uh, maybe some of my colleagues who is present uh, within the lecture is able to to uh, to uh, describe it. I can I can uh, ask uh, my colleague Petra Špačková, but I have no uh, idea why it is connected to to Czech, uh, the Czech project. Yeah, so in Belize, sorry. And the second uh, question is quite general. It's not too much uh, connected to housing estates because uh, if I can uh, if I can distinguish between uh, privatization and restitution. So restitution in Czech Republic generally uh, was focused on two types of property. Uh, one of them, uh, okay, restitution was property given back to the former owner. So we have nationalization of housing stock in Prague and other cities. So all apartment houses, not family houses, but all apartment houses uh, were nationalized during 40s and then given back to former owners uh, during the first half of 1990s. Yeah, so it was restitution of housing stock, mainly tenement houses of inner cities uh, in the Czech case. And the second, uh, second kind of restitution was restitution of land. And the same, nationalization of the whole land during the 40s, and then the land was given back to former owner. But again, this is the case of mainly suburban areas outside the city. So this is the main, I would say, con uh, main condition for suburbanization. But, but in between uh, housing estates, all houses were created by social estates or companies. So nothing to restitute. Yeah? So uh, if I understand it well, so um, the case of privatization, housing estates, housing stock privatization this is this is what what is important for for today's topic not restitution and if i can comment uh, the problems with with privatization uh, of course uh, we were we were afraid a lot uh, how we should privatize not only housing stock but also companies and and many people uh, said that um uh, especially big companies we we did a lot of uh errors uh but in case of urban environment two very i would say successful uh, kind of privatization first was so-called small privatization and it was overnight uh, uh sold in auctions uh, small properties and uh, i don't know what some this this parter the, the first floor or ground floor of, of the city transformed uh, very very fast yeah, and i think it was quite successful from my side uh, more problematic was privatization of uh, housing stock and sometimes there, there were winners especially uh, people from housing estates who were able to buy uh, to buy apartment but sometimes uh, housing uh, this districts, uh, city districts, they don't want to privatize at all. Yeah? So you have no chance to, to buy uh, your, not your, but, 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 but the apartment uh, for small money. Yeah? So it, it is dependent on the local municipal policy. 
Thank you very much. And um, maybe the last question for tonight, because, well, we still have some time, but anyway. Uh, it's also from Maria Melnikova. Uh, first, her uh, expression, she was very glad to hear that large housing estates will become a historical urban layer linked with the city. Uh, and also, she visited a few estates in Prague and also had an impression that they are very livable spaces which sometimes uh, is not like the situation in some other urban um, examples. And she has uh, two questions. Do you collaborate somehow with urban planners in municipalities or boroughs in Prague? And do they use the results of your projects or even um, come with new research questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if, if we collaborate and the second, do you... Uh... And the second is uh, whether the municipality uses the results and also uh, comes with new research questions. Okay, uh, so uh, in Prague it's very specific, uh, specific situation because we have two, two levels of um, city government. The first one uh, is now quite favorable to uh, urban planning and, and especially master planning. And nearby our faculty is so-called Institute of uh, Planning and Development. And a lot of our, especially younger colleagues, they, they work there uh, for, for the master planning and strategic planning uh, department. And some of them are uh, our former PhD students, so they are geographers but mainly they are architects and also uh, engineers. So uh, if we collaborate, uh, we produce uh, several analyses for, for different tasks, for example, for the limitation of metropolitan regions of Prague using mobile phone data. It was our last project uh, this year. And then uh, we collaborate also on strategic, uh, strategic plans and evaluation of master master plan so this is quite close collaboration between between social geographers and and urbanists and architects and uh, the head of the institute is our former student geographer yeah so we are very let's say satisfied that uh, the collaboration is there but uh, this is mainly based on uh, practical issues or applied uh, applied problems not too much uh, on uh, the pure research and i think this is quite deficit and i i, I think um, if you are asking if for example these results on segregation or these results on uh, new social spatial uh, social social spatial patterns are used uh, for master planning i don't think so and especially new master plan uh, don't use uh, uh, research too much and this is much more about architecture and functions and, and physical state and not too much about processes and, and social social spaces yeah, so yes and no uh, we collaborate a lot but sometimes more um, more collaboration is needed yeah so it's it's difficult uh, we would like to uh, to collaborate more but uh, i think there's something like tension between practitioners and academics and we still must communicate more especially between sociologists geographers and architects who are these practitioners who has these rounded stamps and uh, they are the most powerful people. And, and the second level uh, is level of uh, municipality. And uh, uh, now we have one, <laughs> uh, one um, I would say, um, project uh, of Prague 11 uh, on my table. And uh, we're just thinking if it is possible to, uh, to solve the problem and if it is if it is possible uh, in my team to uh, together with demographers uh, uh, to follow uh, the job but uh, 
yeah, there is also collaboration on, on the level of individual districts. Yes. Yeah, so thank you very much, Martin. I think that that is all for, to, for tonight. And I wanted to thank you one more time for uh, an interesting information packed and thought provoking lecture. Um, it was an honor for us to invite you uh, to that particular event tonight. And for our audience, thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for your interest, in for, uh, for, your interest uh, for the topic of large housing estates. And next Wednesday on 7 p.m. Moscow time, we, we are welcoming Clemens Klickler from uh, German Bureau Stadtmenschen Berlin. Uh, and we will explore more the topic about um, of citizen participation and participatory planning uh, with connection with like social um, social processes in the neighborhood during the revitalization of large housing estates in Germany. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much. Everyone have a nice rest of Wednesday and rest of the week and see you next time. Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you also for all the organizers for, for perfect uh, organization, uh, even in time of COVID and, and being distant. Okay. Goodbye and, and uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next Wednesday.